how healthy is this Tesla Model 3 after 216,000 miles? We're going to get up and ramp, have a look, plus plug it in to get the battery data. Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Richard and this is our high mileage Tesla Model 3. It's covered 216,000 miles in a space of just three years. That's 200 miles a day, every day, seven days a week, thereabouts on average. It's been a taxi, so it's covered a few miles, but how is it? Well, we do know that the batteries, motors do seem to be original, and although it seems to drive well, exactly how good is it? Well, we're gonna plug it in. We're gonna plug it into Scan My Tester and read the battery data, how much capacity still remains on this car after 216,000 miles of driving. I'll give you another look around it and show you what we've found so far cosmetically. How is it holding up? You'd have seen a little bit on the first video, my kind of first reactions, but we give it an initial wash. I'll show you around it. We'll get it up on the ramp, get the wheels off, have a look at the suspension components. Plus, we don't think the cabin filter's possibly ever been changed. So let's get that out and have a look at it. What sort of state is that going to be in? Now, we do know crucially that this car doesn't seem to ever have had anything major done at Tesla. It's had one thing done at Tesla, which was an O-ring. So in its 260,000 miles, it's gone back to Tesla for that, one. for that, that little thing there. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Now, before we get into this video, it's traditional to just kind of give your Tesla a name. You see the name on the screen and then your app and everything like that. And we haven't really given this a name yet. There's been a couple of ideas out there. Now, we usually give all our cars a name here, but if you've got a suggestion of what we could call this car a well-used, high-mileage example of a Tesla Model 3, then put your uh, polite comments uh, down below. I look forward to reading them. Right, let's have a look. Firstly, let's get then cover the cosmetics quickly, because if you haven't seen the first video, um, actually for the mileage it's done, it doesn't look too bad. We've only given this car a very quick wash. We haven't detailed or anything like that. Uh, and the wheel covers are off at the moment because we're about to get it up on the ramp and get the wheels off and have a look at the suspension. But just to cover this quickly, yes, there's a few stone chips, but actually it's okay. It's not too bad. Uh, I think we'll replace the number plate because that's just got tarnished a bit there. There's a little stone chip ding here. The wheels have got a couple of little scuffs on them, but not too bad. So we're going to get them refurbished. That's fine. Stone chips have caused some paint peel there. That's easy enough to get that repair. So we'll do a little bit of paint there. Coming down the side, it actually all looks pretty good. We'll maybe give it a polish, make this car look really good again. It doesn't look too bad at all. You would never guess the mileage this has covered. Around the back, considering this was used as a taxi, luggage in and out, it's not too bad. There's a few little light marks on the bumper, but it's okay. There's a stone chip in the wing here. This is the interior. Have a look at this seat. But the seat is in really good condition. In fact, the whole interior is in really good condition. It just has a little bit of wrinkling on the steering wheel here. But in fact, my colleague Serge has already sorted out a replacement for that. Serge, I just noticed, yeah. you're behind me. <laughs> This used to be a wooden dashboard, but you've already swapped it for our Alcantara one, haven't you? <laughs> How did that get there? So, well, that looks better already, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, we do this Alcantara dash, so you can take this, the wooden trim out, put this in, looks much better, it matches the door cars here. So, this car is actually looking great, and we're going to kind of restore it to really good condition as well, but it's been impressively good. It does seem to drive okay, but there are a couple of things that do need doing. It does sometimes come up with an error message that the parking sensor system isn't available. When you go into the service menu on this, you can see that actually it's this sensor here. He's showing a full, it's intermittent, uh, but it's easy to change this parking sensor. You've ordered one already, Serge, I think, haven't you? How much was it? 30 pounds. 30 pounds, used one or? New one. Yeah, not too expensive, so <laughs> five minute job to change that should be easy enough. This truck maybe might need changing at some point because it's kind of wobbling a bit, but it's... Uh... Not that uncommon to see these. Yeah, you can see a little bit of wobble on the strut there. That's quite common on these cars now, isn't it? I would imagine it's probably had some suspension bushes before. That tends to be the common yeah. point on these. So we'll get up on a ramp and have a look at that and show you what can they do. And crucially, mechanically, the drivetrain and the motors seem to be completely original. Yeah. So uh, what's the process here? You're just powering the car down and then you can plug into the OBD port yeah. and simple as that. And then we can read all the exact data from that. Okay, screen recording's on. This is uh, one of many pages that you can actually get on yeah, the scan my Tesla. Okay. Now I can see the DC and AC charge totals. So 10,700 kilowatts of DC charge. So only 10,000 kilowatt hours of DC charging. That's actually quite low. Yeah. So this is probably charged up at home overnight yeah. and then used for a couple hundred miles in a day yeah. and actually only fairly crazy top tops. So it's got quite low DC. So the amount of AC charging then? 47,000. 47,000. 
and then it counts also how much charging it's had from regenerative braking effect. You know, when you yeah. lift off, it recovers its own energy. How much is that? Twenty six thousand. Wow, that's so loads, isn't it? Three times more than the the, the AC charging from just from regen. So it shows how much energy you can recoup just for lifting off and letting the motors yeah. become generators rather than having to friction brake like you do in any other car. It's a low amount of DC charging then. Now, does that help with battery health? Probably. It probably does, doesn't um, it? Although I've seen cars with lots of DC charging, including our car, Clint, that's had a lot of DC charging. And actually his battery health, 115,000 miles, came out about 90%. This car though, now let's look at nominal capacity and see where we're at there. How much capacity has this car got compared to when it was new? Well, if you calculate yeah. the percentage, yeah. it says 88%. 88%. So it's lost, lost 12%. Lost from its ideal 100% state. Yeah. Now we know that most of the battery degradation actually happens in the first kind of 20,000 miles, really. That's the yeah. biggest chunk. But 88% of capacity it still has. Yeah. Uh, That's great. Still. And we're on 215,922 <laughs> miles as we sit here reading this now. So 88%. Now, does that correspond with the Avalu test? Yes. It's exactly. exactly the same. 88% yeah. state of health. So yeah. it's not just this, Avalu. So we can quite confidently say this has got 88% of its capacity and it's never been to test a, to have a battery change. So no. this is original battery, original motors, everything like that. And that's really good, isn't it? Fantastic. I'm interested to know how many times these wipers have swept the windscreen because we Let's did see. pose the question and people have been placing their bets on the first video. Wiper cycles. Yeah. 56,400. Is that all? <laughs> Apparently. I thought it would be the hundreds of thousands. <laughs> really? Yeah. 56,400? And this was a taxi in Newcastle. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't rain much in Newcastle. <laughs> um, I was just there a couple of days ago myself, and it was, certainly was raining. Right. Uh, well, this is really good. 88% battery capacity, still drives fine. The only thing really is this bit of wrinkling on the steering wheel yeah. here, but it did fail on suspension bushes for its MOT. So let's get it up on the ramp, and you can show us what that was about mm -hmm. and what we're going to do to the car. What else we're going to do to fix it. I like the way Serge is busy, just as we about to speed up on the ramp, so... <laughs> I'll do it, Serge, it's all right. I've put better trousers on today because I'm filming. So we know the battery is good, but mechanically, uh, how is it? Well, we've done an MOT test on this, or submitted it for one, and it did fail, and it fell because of this. See a little bit of play there? So, let's get the wheel off, and Serge, can you show us what that is about? Okay, so it's, uh, it's from this arm. Uh, there's a bush here that is very common to fail. The bush in this joint here with the upper yeah. arm, yeah? Yeah, uh, and that needs replacing. Okay. Worst case scenario is the whole arm, which we do have as well, but it's usually that. that and you can just change that one bush, can you? You can, yeah. Okay, so how much is that bush? 20 pounds. 20 quid, that's it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I was thinking this could be an expensive repair bill. And this arm? About 60 pounds. Okay, nothing too major at all. And that's it? Yeah. Um, so it was MOT, that, that was it. Everything else is fine. There's a few bushes going on here, but they're all okay out there. I mean, we have we know that suspension bushes, like any car on a Tesla, can need replacing. And it's probably the one maintenance item that is the most substantial, isn't it, on yeah. these cars, to be fair? There's uh, another one that I kind of noticed that it might slip. You can see it there. Uh-huh. And I ordered that one as well. That one's 16 pounds. 16? Yeah. Oh, I might as well just change it, yeah. Um, so I ordered both sides. So we'll do both sides as well, whilst it's uh, up on the ramp having this done. So nothing too major. So are we going to overhaul the rear suspension a little bit uh, whilst we're at it? And everything, I can see the rear motor there. Everything there looks fine. The under trays look okay. Some of the under trays used to have issues with kind of falling apart it's a little bit, but this yeah. is the plastic one, is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. The later ones are plastic rather than that kind of earlier fiberboard type stuff, aren't they? Yeah. So these rear brakes, Serge, I mean, the car's been sat around a bit now, hence there's a bit of light corrosion in the front, but they do look a bit scored. Yeah. Now, these are most probably the original brake discs and pads, aren't they? But they're scored there, so being sensible, it wouldn't do any harm to change that brake pad and disc whilst we're at it anyway. Yeah. Probably the pads as well. Well, if it's uh, the first time in 216,000 miles, yeah. and this is the thing with electric cars, because they don't really use the brakes very much, they don't really wear them out. Every time you lift off, the car is slowing down off the motor, and we've seen that it's already recovered lots of kilowatt hours of energy yeah. just from regen. So 
216,000 miles, they'll be original. Right, so on the front, I mean, the light, the light corrosion you see here is where we washed the car and it's uh, not been moved uh, for a couple of days now, but there's a little lip on the front disc and the pads actually look quite good. So these have probably had a change, do you think, or probably just the front pads? Maybe just the front pads. Yeah. Um, and the discs are probably the original ones. Yeah, I mean, there's, they're kind of corroded on the inside there. So there's a little bit of a lip, but they, they're kind of nice and smooth. We think then probably in 216,000 miles, it's had a set of front brake pads. Probably, probably not that long ago even, because yeah. uh, they're, they're quite meaty. Now the front suspension arms, upper and lower, can be prone. Again, it's this uh, sort of ball joint here, isn't it, that tends to be prone. It's probably had a couple of changes of front suspension arms, probably, isn't it? Probably, by maybe an independent garage. Yes, yeah. We know it hasn't been to Tesla, but independent garages can quite happily change these. It's fairly standard, easy stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I'd probably bet, I mean, it's always covered mileage, but it's probably had two fronts, you know, every 70, 80, 100,000 miles. We've yeah. seen them go at 40,000 miles, we've seen them go at 100,000 miles, could be anywhere in between, but let's just say it's had a couple of front suspension arms with bushes changed. How much does that tend to cost? Top arms, I think, are 70 pounds, is that right? Actually, they're 50. 50, sorry. Plus to that. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess about 60 pounds. Okay, and the lower arms? About the same price, yeah. 70 pounds. Okay. Um, so they're all kind of in the same price. Uh, but nothing nothing too tragic it's just the labor of doing it and yeah. getting the parts and stuff like that not especially expensive is no. the key cheaper than doing a cam belt water pump on a yeah, two yeah. liter diesel yeah yeah all right let's do the cabin filter yeah. let's have a look what have we got Ooh. yeah that's pretty grotty now is this an original tesla one well it says manuf i think that's manufacturing date yeah 2021 yeah, July. So this is probably original cabin filter. Probably. I mean, uh, unless he replaced them with... With an older cabin filter. Yeah. Well, it hasn't been back to test. This so the the, one. Look at the state of this, yeah. <laughs> so this is probably original cabin filter, yeah. I mean, I've seen worse, you know, with less miles. Well, yeah, you can have less miles, but spend more time in the car. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> right, let's get a new one in there. Any other servicing required at the moment? Probably had some new wipers at some point. These are fine. Um, oh yeah, wipers. Yeah, I didn't put yeah. them on my maintenance list, but how much is that of wipers? 30, 40, 30, 50 quid? 30 pounds, I think. You ordered it from Tesla? Yeah. Crikey. It has some credits. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Tesla credits. And there's a new cabin filter. There we go. Well, that's most of the servicing done then. Yeah. We'll get them in. Top up the washer fluid. It's a fresh service done, really, and we'll we'll probably go about the rear brakes at some point over the future weeks. So as Serge finishes putting a clean air filter in, let's round up this video. We've established a few things. One, the battery is still at 88% of its original capacity. Now, typically when we test a car, and we've also did a video recently with 300 battery test results, we found that typically at about 100,000 miles, most of these have got about 90% uh, of their battery, including we've done that on other testers. This one with 216,000 miles has still only gone down to 88%. Now it's had quite a low proportion of DC charging versus AC charging. That probably helps a little bit, but I've seen cars with a lot of DC charging still reporting great battery health. So I actually don't think it makes a massive difference. I mean, the biggest thing that affects battery health is having it not sitting at 100% for long periods of time or 0%, just keeping it in between. And because this car's just been on the road all the time, the battery has just constantly been in cycles in between. So the battery is good, drivetrain is good. We're going to change a bush for an MOT, nothing too expensive. Rear brake pads and discs, originals by the look of it, but coming up we'll probably change them in a couple of thousand miles now before i go uh, i have been doing some calculations here running costs a little bit roughly um, but in terms of how much this has cost to charge versus how much a diesel car for example would have cost to put fuel in now we know how much ac charging this car had and we know how much dc charging so on the ac typically with an electric car you charge overnight and you get it at seven pence per kilowatt hour so um, i've taken that calculation plus DC charging, I've worked out of 40 pence per kilowatt hour. A lot of DC chargers are more expensive, but the tester ones typically are about 39, 40 pence per kilowatt hour. So I've used that, and I've come up with a calculation of about 7,625 pounds in charging costs. If you wish, round it up, maybe call it 10,000 pounds in electricity to cover 216,000 miles. Again, a few quick calculations. A diesel car that can do 50 miles per gallon, say, means it needs 19,500 litres of fuel. Currently in the UK, it's about £1.43 a litre of diesel. So roughly speaking, about £27,800 worth of diesel if it was a diesel car, and more like £8,000 for the electric, because electric car. Then let's look at uh, maintenance costs. We know this has had, okay, maybe it's had a couple of suspension bushes, arms front and back. 
any car would have needed those. But imagine if you had a diesel car at 216,000 miles, it would have had a couple of water pump changes, cam belts, uh, DPF filters, clutches, gearbox oil, engine oil, injectors, turbos, all that stuff. You know, I don't need to go on about it. Um, you know what's involved with maintaining and running an ice car. It would have needed a fair bit of spending on it over the course of 216,000 miles. And it might run quite well still. It's not massively high mileage, but it tends to be more than the average lifespan of an engine, whereas this seems to be going strong. So really quite pleased with this. And you've just done a fresh service, um, i.e. you've changed the, the cabin filter, so that's in there now. So do we think electric cars are good for high mileage? Well, I certainly do. Hope that's been really interesting. Thanks for watching. There'll be more on this car coming up, so make sure you stay subscribed to our channel. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. <laughs>